Peter the Surgeon Come Peter Kamakaw, 32 years of age, 11 and 05 knockout, extremely skilled, coming off a win against Angel Hernandez, Florida in the third, defeated Angel Urena in the second, courtesy of a knockout, and then went to distance in a couple other fights, and also scored a scintillating first round knockout against Alessandro Santos, 2016 Russian Olympian. Sometimes we'll take a round or two, but then starts to sit on his punches and put them together. And that's when the KOs start to come. He's got five in 11 pro fights. Eight rounds or less, NBA Intercontinental Middleweight Championship on the line to close the show on the West Coast and right here on a Saturday night, BXNG TV. On my left, fighting out of the blue corner in the black and red colored trucks. He weighed in at 160 pounds. He has an experienced record of 18 wins, nine losses and one draw with 11 wins by way of knockout. Representing St. Louis, Missouri, Vaughn the Animal Alexander. His opponent on my right, fighting out of the red corner and in the red and black colored trunks. He weighed in at 160 pounds. He has an undefeated record of 11 wins, zero losses, zero draws with five wins by way of knockout from LeBinx, Russia, representing Los Angeles, California, Peter. The Surgeon Kamakar! Beltline looks good here, Beltline looks good here. We're going eight rounds for the NBA title, okay? Touch gloves, you're both received the introduction of the All right, so here we go. Main event of the evening. Cap off a wonderful and entertaining night of boxing. Kamakov, 32 years of age, 11 and 05. Knockouts coming out of the red corner, looking to move his record to a perfect 12 and 0. In the black trunks, red trim. And Vaughn Alexander, red and black trunks as well. Slight height advantage, 38 years of age, 18, 9, and 1. Been stopped a couple times in his career. And Peter touching him up down inside low to start things off round number one, left up top as well. Komakov, as we mentioned, you know, that feeling out process in a round or two, but then starts to really sit on his punches, put them together right up top. Left, just glancing shot right off the shoulder of Alexander. I think if you're Alexander, and I, I hate to repeat myself, you got to weather this early storm and get out of the first couple rounds unscathed, get this fight to the third or fourth and build a little confidence and start to get your opponent guessing a little bit. Alexander. As I mentioned, knocked out a couple times in his career. For the most part, pretty durable guy, even though he suffered nine losses in 18 pro fights. And we can go through kind of a who's who of the guys that he's fought as well between rounds. But he's just got to figure out a way. Listen, I got to box. You know, I got to out smart, out think, maybe out hustle, start his career 12 and 0. So do the math right there 6 9 and 1 over his last 16. 
Kamikov with a tight left. Touching up again. With the left hand. See that high? You know, that just should say that more crisper, tighter guard. Alexander a little more lapsed. Left hand. Just a little more loose. See if Peter can find a home with that right. Take advantage of it. Good combination. Strong. Keeping himself out of harm's way. Alexander, the one thing about Alexander that we talked a little bit about in the beginning of the telecast, yeah, 18 pro wins, but 11 of those courtesy of knockouts. So he's definitely, when you look at the knockout ratio, uh, definitely has some pop. Right around 61% for his career. One of the books. So had that nice little run to start his career and then had some tough losses. Dennis Doglin, you know, very good fighter, lost that over 10. Early on in his career, he was fighting guys lopsided records, making the debuts, you know, guys, you know. 7 and 5, 7 and 29, 0 and 3. Then all of a sudden you start to pick up the quality of opposition. You're a little more tested. He's had a rough go of it. Second arc of his career after starting 12 and 0. Coming off a 8 round unanimous decision loss to Joshin James. Back in, uh, I think, I'm going to double check. I believe that was a couple weeks ago in February. So, <clears throat> pardon me, trying to stay active nonetheless. But... Certainly pulls off a win tonight. It would be a signature win over a uh, 2016 Russian Olympian. And Kamikov. And Peters, we alluded to, 11-0, five knockouts again. So that's pretty decent round to knockout, fight to knockout ratio. Had a good win, November 2023 against Angel Hernandez, third round knockout. And this is what he does, right? He starts to pick up the pace a little bit after that opening round, feeling out process. Round number two, a little more compact, a little more judicious with his shots, a little more precise, starting to find a home. Left hand, counter right by Alexander. He's got that, see, he's looking almost like that shoulder roll. Right hand, shielding a little bit, trying to have those punches bounce right off that shoulder. Comes back downstairs with a left. He's the taller of the two. See if he can take advantage of it. Good right hand. Left hand just for good measure and a counter left to the body from Alexander. Eight rounds, 38 year old legs. Kamakov 32, who's gonna have the fresher legs, stamina as this fight starts to go into the championship rounds, six, seven, and eight. We're closing in on two in the books inside the Fox Theater. Redwood City, California. Think about the quality, the opposition, the opponents. Kamaka has had Fighting out of Russia, 2016 Olympian, extremely talented. Perfect. 
Left hand trying to sneak through. Alexander with a good body shot and another left just for good measure as we close in on two. So 9 o'clock on the West Coast, 12 o'clock on the East Coast, which means got to pay homage and tribute, wishing everyone a happy and safe St. Patty's Day, St. Patrick's Day. And it's good to see some of these Irish fighters on the card tonight do battle. It was a heck of a fight between Hyde and McCarthy, a co-main feature. Take a look at Alexander's Corner as he gets set to come out off the stool in round number three. Hasn't really mustered a lot of offense, but then conversely, Peter, you know, hasn't also really had a, a ton of substance, right? I mean, it's it can be methodical. You can break down your opponent. Um, but it's been, you know, one here, one there, right? We, we We're looking for, you know, those combinations, the consistency of these combinations, especially... You know, if, you, if you're fighting off, leading with that jab, you know, we just want to see the consistency. And the judges are going to look for that in a fight like this early on in round number three. You know, in and out, in and out. I don't think it's going to cut it for either fighter as this fight progresses. And right now, because Peter's not really mounting a substantial amount of offense. I think if you're Alexander, you try to walk him down a little bit here. Get the left out there. Cut down the distance. See, he's trying to cut off the ring. Not using his jab at all, but just kind of coming forward. He snuck a left downstairs. Touched him up a little bit. Has to be a little more decisive where he wants to go here. That's a great double up. The Russian Kamakov. Another left hand just for good measure. So left starting to find a little bit of a home here in round number three. Alexander tried to come back with a right counter of his own. Not much on that. That right hand though was a good scoring shot. So they get broken apart in round number three. Meet back in the center of the ring. Now this turned into a kind of pick and choose your moment. Combinations, far and few. A little infighting, you can appreciate that. Alexander. Let that right hand go. Still trying to find a home for it. As we mentioned, 11 knockouts in his career, 28 pro fights. The Kamakov retreating, backpedaling, not taking a lot of shots and maybe content with giving up this round. Alexander has been the stalker and I guess if you want to give the edge and say who's been a little more aggressive I have to pick my spots through three I mean Alexander had his moments in that round as we are already three in the books getting set for round number four of this main event NBA Intercontinental Middleweight Championship so that's a good belt that's on the line I think for both these fighters too, you've got Kamakov, who's 32, Alexander, who's 38. So yeah, 32, you're still 
young, right, in the game, so to speak, but 11 pro fight. Remember, you also got to look at the amateur record and whatnot. I think so sometimes we look at the wear and tears we get set for round number four, the wear and tear of the body. And how many amateur fights that a fighter has gone through. I don't think time at this point, you got to pick up the pace a little bit. And you got to pick up the pace in this fight. And I think there's a lot of fanfare with a fight like this. I think after what we just saw in the co-main feature, we saw a lot of activity. I mean, even McCarthy took a lot of shots, but Hyde was just breathtaking his approach in that one. These two, it's more of a, it's a stare down. One of these fighters got to insert themselves, start letting their hands go here. Is it going to be Kamakov or is it going to be Alexander? We got spoiled by that co-main event. The action is just, it's, it's beyond fleeting at this moment. And, if one fighter just injects a little bit of offense, a little bit of life, they can easily turn the tide of this fight. Mount them back in their favor. It's tough when you try to score fights like this, especially if you're the judging, you're the officials, you're looking at a fight like this, and what are you looking at here? A little burst here and there, maybe a burst at the end of the round maybe a flurry in the beginning of the round. There hasn't been really a sustained attack from either fighter. Offensively, there just hasn't. So it looks like both fighters are being warned. Come here. Maybe I don't think it's malicious intent when so many shots. You know, two fighters crouching down at times. Sometimes you're going to get below the belt line. Alexander, that's a good right hand. Look like clash of heads, headbutt, perhaps a cut. We'll see if we can get a little clarity. They're being worn with the shots down below and the headbutt. I think this has happened in the past with Alexander as well, but we want to be accurate with that. Ooh. But you can see, I mean, both. It's, a, it's several times that their heads have kind of met like that. So we'll see if we can get a shot at both the fighters' corners respectively. Through four as we get set for round number five. Kamakov's corner. And there's that cut that Alexander absorbed to that head button. Great shot by the crew as always. Doesn't appear to be anything that would be troublesome as we get set for round number five. But this is a 10 or 12 round fight and the ringside position has to keep checking that eye. I mean, if that's pretty much above the brow and his Blood's coming down. It's impairing his vision. There's another, again, I mean, this is what, we, we might get this in a fight like this. It just might not be aesthetically pleasing. It might be ugly to watch. As it is scheduled for eight, this is round number five. But if I'm Kamakov, I'm, I'm peppering that eye where that cut was. I don't care how it occurred, but I'm going after it. And he does right there with a right hand. 
which is now going to have Alexander starting to think, all right, let me keep my guard up. I got to start protecting that eye, which is going to leave the midsection and downstairs open. These fights, these are so tough to score because there's just not a ton of action. Unless we get something in the latter stages of this fight, second half of the fight. Your guess is going to be as good as mine. Alexander's just, I don't know if it's, he just, well, there's another warning right there. So you get the warnings with Shots below the belt line, the headbutts. You know if Alexander just very reluctant to let his hands go here. And really hasn't put any type of combination of substance. I mean, it's just a body shot, move away. Body shot, step aside. It's almost as though he's just doing bag work right now. And I, he's a, in my opinion, he's a better fighter than that. A sneaky right that just found home from Kamikov. There's a right hand from Alexander. That was a body shot. That was a good shot. But he just ate a left. And then another left. A little more flurries right now from Peter. Action starting to pick up, at least from his his offensive output starting to pick up a little bit in this round. And perhaps in this corner, they told him to pick it up a little bit because maybe the fight was a little more closer than they anticipated at this point. Distinguish yourself, get a clean round and bank it. A much better round. So the crowd's been in and give them a lot of credit as we're through five getting ready for a round number six of an eight round affair. Fox Theater, Redwood City. Saturday night on the West Coast, BXNG TV. Rich Quinone is here following the action. Appreciate everyone keeping us locked in and wonderful job by the crew as always doing yeoman like work not on the air without these guys and girls always get social with us facebook ig as we are getting set second portion of the fight See if the action picks up between Alexander and Kamikov. Alexander in the black and red trunks. Peter, 32 years of age, 11 and 0. Five knockouts. Black and red, looking to remain perfect. 2016 Russian Olympian. And picked up the pace in the previous round. And he's got to build upon that. As we are through five action now, early on. And... Love to know how you guys have scored it at home so far. There's a good left hand. And Alexander comes back. Right downstairs to the midsection. But they're fleeting, they're not consistent. It's one and move away. One, two, move away. It's not gonna win the fight. Good combination up top. 
Kamakov trying to build on that last round, doing some good work now. He's putting out, this is what you want, right? Outworking the punch output. Show the judges you're more active in a fight like this. Alexander's corner did a real good job. I mean, that eye, there, nothing really to worry about, but they still took care of it. That's a tight right hand from Kamakov that caught Alexander. See this infighting like this, this phone booth? It's not going to be Alexander's strong suit. I think he gave up too many rounds early. He might now really start to force himself or be forced to put together some combinations and maybe do something he doesn't want to do. Left hand from Peter, then a right up top, just for good measure. Left hand again, rocks back Alexander. Almost caught him with that right uppercut. A little wild, open up a little bit Alexander with a counter right of his own. But again, don't want to belabor the point, nothing of substance, and that's been the issue, that's been the problem. And now you start to get into a fight like this, where you're deep into the fight, and both corners, respectively, need to tell their fighters, listen, six in, getting set for round number seven. We've got eight. You're behind. Pick up the pace. Like, do not leave this in the judges' hands where they look at this fight and they go back in their mind and they pinpoint little flurry here, little flurry there. Was it enough? It wasn't enough. And that's typically what happens in fights like this. So as we get set for round number seven, again, your guess is as good as mine. I've got Kamakov. I've, I've, I've given him the edge because I just think his punch output, it's just been greater than Alexander's. And if you're in Alexander's corner, you tell him you are behind on the scorecards. You, you need a knockout to win. You're going to have to let your hands go. <laughs> You're going to have to engage. Kamakov in the black and red trunks, red trim. Alexander in the more solid trunks with the red as well. Round number seven scheduled for eight. NBA Intercontinental Middleweight Championship on the line. And one of these fighters got to want it. They got to take it. They got to grab it. You're starting to see now Alexander a little more. This has probably been the most he's uh, assertive in this fight. But then it subsides. He's got to keep the pressure, the momentum. He's got to keep going forward, keep going forward. That's not going to cut it. I mean, we're talking about giving an inch, taking an inch. Got to be more decisive, more direct with these shots. That straight right hand from Kamakov, that was a landing shot. And look, sometimes you just have an off night as a fighter. Midway through, seventh round, scheduled for eight. And Alexander, if you go back, has not really established the jab at all tonight. It's been you know, just tight. Little phone booth, some check hooks here and there. Touch up a little bit, get in, get out. Nothing of substance closing in on seven of this eight round championship affair. And I think if it stands, that might be one of the reasons if he goes on to lose this fight. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that Komakov has done anything out of the ordinary. I just think a fight like this, 
from the naked eye who's been the more active fighter, who's landed the more active, cleaner shots. You know, in a fight like this, you want to make it hard on the officials, not because it's not action-packed, but because you're matching what your opponent's doing. And when you fall behind on the scorecards like this, and you need a knockout to win, and you really haven't been able to kind of build any type of offense or momentum or test or challenge your opponent, it's tough to do with a round to go. It really is. The mouth guard comes back in. Action resumes. See right there, Alexander goes to the body. He's got to be more decisive. Has to be more decisive. He's got it in him. He's got to be more decisive. Eighth and final round. This is the eighth and final round. Great venue this evening. Fox Theater, Redwood City. In California, weather's been nice. On the West Coast, get that breeze around this time of year. St. Patty's Day, technically 1221 on the East Coast, 921 on the West Coast. Everyone was treated to a wonderful homemade event. Tommy Hyde winning a strap, taking care of McCarthy. And now, eighth and final round, Komakov and Alexander. I mean, right now I've got Komakov winning this fight. I just think based on just the more consistency when it comes to being active, I don't think anything really stood out. But if you're Alexander, you go for broke here, you press the action, and you try to catch him one time with that right hand and get him out of here. Because you're going to need a knockout to win this fight. Uh, establishingly jab, anything like that. It's just too little too late at this point of the fight. Eighth and final round early on. It's an excellent night. Wonderful card put on by Westside Promotions. Wonderful. It's just... Uh, a lot of action, some very intriguing, compelling fights. So we want to thank everyone. Hope you've enjoyed tonight's telecast as we are closing in in this one, late in the eighth and final round. See who walks away with the NBA Intercontinental Middleweight Championship. Alexander. Has to now go to that reserve tank. Maybe do something he doesn't want to do. Let his hands go a little more. Down in the black and red trunks. Kamakov being pushed back. Perfect 11-0 record. Five knockouts. Yeoman-like, I'll say, work tonight. Not the most crisp performance, but you're allowed to have an off night here and there. All right, late stages in the eighth and final. We'll let the crowd bring you home in this one. Kokoff and Alexander. Referee watching the action closely. And see, it's just that pausing, that hesitation, that waiting from Alexander. That might be, that might do him in tonight. The stranger things have happened when we've seen scoring in boxing. That's for sure. But the posturing, the not letting the hands go. It's very hard to win a fight like that. Left hand from Peter, just for good measure. Another left, clean things up. Third time he's found a home for that in this eighth and final round. 
as this one coming to a close and we'll go to the scorecards. Good sportsmanship there between the two. As I mentioned, special thanks, wonderful card put on by Westside Promotions. Everyone, do not forget to keep us locked into BXNG TV, Boxing TV, The Next Generation. You can check out schedule of events coming up if you missed any past events on demand as well. And very cost-effective PPVs have an opportunity to look at perhaps tomorrow's future stars, grassroots boxing at its best. That show's coming up in Philly, Boston, D.C., so always follow us on social media platforms on IG and Facebook and, of course, online. And don't forget West Side Promotions. Give them a follow. See what they're doing, what they got cooking coming up next. Excellent card put in. So we'll throw it down to our ring announcer one last time, and we will get the official verdict on this one. See who walks away with the NBA Intercontinental Middleweight Championship. And then we'll put the books and put the bed. A very good night of boxing on the West Coast. I was so impressed with Hyde tonight. So impressed. Such an entertaining fight to watch. Let's give it up for these two great fighters. And to make it official, ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Referee Marshall Walker touched it 72-80 for Vaughn Alexander. Kermit Bayless has it. 77 75 for Peter Karmakov. And your winner by split decision, Brian Tokamoto has it 78 74 for your winner, Peter the Surgeon. And as we Kamakov. suspected, Peter Karmakov gets the win, gets the scrap. 77 75, 78 74. One judge scored it 80 72 for Alexander. Not really sure how that's possible, but nonetheless, um, Kamakov gets the win and the strap moves to 12 and oh, he'll don the NBA Intercontinental Middleweight Championship. Alexander falls to 18 and 10. Well, that's going to put a bow on a wonderful night of boxing. Special thanks to the crew tonight for BXNG TV, Westside Promotions. And again, hope you enjoyed tonight's telecast as we came to you live inside. Thank you all for coming out Redwood tonight City, Redwood, and for this. Redwood City, California. Don't forget, check us out online for future events for BXNG TV. You can follow me on X and Facebook at Rich Q and IG. We hope you appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. Great job by the crew as always. Hope you enjoyed tonight's telecast as much as we did. And as always, I'm Rich Canunas. We will talk to you next time, Ringside. This local union 467 and Apprentice Trading Center. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 617. Dr. David Kaplan, Foot Care Specialist Inc. Lyuna Laborers International Union of North America, Local 261. Dr. Paul Hughes, Orthopedics. The Carpenter Linoleum and Soft Tile Workers, Local Union 12. Thank you all and good night.